In today's video, you're gonna learn how to connect voice flow to Google Calendar to build out a chatbot like this. Today, we're going to create a really simple yet powerful chatbot utilizing NAN, the automation builder, to connect these two tools together so that you can simplify scheduling in your voice flow chatbots for your user. So here's a quick look at the system that we're building out today. And this is inside of voice flow, inside of a new chatbot project. We can see that it's not a super long system, but it is very helpful. I'm gonna walk you through each and every one of these steps and how I added each of them. We're going to be utilizing some embedding as well as NAN to set up a little webhook situation here. And I'm also going to take you into NAN and show you how to build out the actual connection between VoiceFlow and Google Calendar. So this is going to be a super great tutorial today. Now, if you do not want to start from scratch and you would just like to take this automation and get on with your day or maybe follow along, uh, you can find this automation inside of my template marketplace in the description below. All of the projects that I have built are in this template marketplace and you can go ahead and grab that now in the description below. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So first things first, make sure that you have a VoiceFlow account. You can find the link to sign up in the description below. They offer a free plan so you can sign up for VoiceFlow and just make sure that you have that set up. And then we're going to head over into a new project and we're going to just go ahead and start by building out this automation from scratch. Now we can see we have the finished project here in a different workflow, but I'm gonna walk us through step-by-step step on this workflow instead. So what we're gonna do is assume that this is that green start block at the beginning of each um, chatbot workflow. We're gonna go ahead and add a talk block with a message. And this is just gonna say something along the lines of, hey, answer a few questions to schedule a 30 minute meeting with me. Great. So put whatever you want there. It's just an introduction. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move into another talk block with a message. Cool. So we've got this talk block with a message and we're going to say first, what's your name? And this is going to be the block that's collecting the user's name. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go down to listen because what we need to do is listen to what the user's response is to that question, capture it and store it in a variable. So we're gonna take this and we put in a listen and capture block and we're gonna go up to the top right here where it says entities and just capture entire user reply. And then we're gonna go down here and I'm gonna go ahead and put in name. Now I already created this variable, but assuming that you haven't created this variable, you just press the create variable button and then create the variable and you'll have made that variable. So make sure that you make that variable, but since I already made it, I'm gonna use the one I already made. So we're gonna capture the user's reply to name. All right, we're gonna replicate this process again. So we're gonna do another talk block and we're gonna say next, what's your email? And then we're gonna go ahead and add another capture block here. Do the same thing, change it from entities to entire user reply. And we're going to set this variable that we capture that information to when the user types in their email to the variable email. Now, if you don't have this variable, make sure you create it. Great. Now we're going to replicate this process one last time. Let's add another talk block. And we're going to go ahead and add the question, what would you like to discuss in our meeting? Great. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to listen for their response with this capture block here. Go down to entire user reply and capture this to meeting info. Now make sure you make that variable. Great. So what we did here was we started off with a great introduction and then we moved into basically a form. So we moved through a form where we're just capturing users information so that we can actually send that information to Google Calendar once we've got all of it. So the next step that we're moving into is connecting to Google Calendar and actually embedding your Google Calendar into the VoiceFlow UI so that the person who is using your chatbot can actually see your calendar and your availability directly in the user interface. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to add another talk block with a message. Cool. So we've got this talk block with a message. This is what we're going to use to embed our Google Calendar. But now what we need to do is actually navigate into our Google Calendar. So go ahead, navigate to Google Calendar, sign into the calendar that you want to use. And what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to the settings menu right up here and press on settings. Great. Now you're going to go down to the calendar that you want to connect to. I'm just going to connect to this calendar that I just made. And you're going to go down to integrate calendar here. Outstanding. So now we can see that there is an embed code right here, and we're going to actually use an iframe to embed the UI of our Google Calendar into VoiceFlow. But here's the thing. This basic iframe really does not fit into VoiceFlow well because VoiceFlow is such a tall and kind of narrow widget. We need to actually customize 
the calendar that we're embedding to fit into our voice flow chatbot. So let's press on customize here. Outstanding. And what we can see is that there's actually a ton of ways that we can customize this. Now I'm going to go ahead and select which calendars I want to display. We'll just do birthdays and holidays in the United States. And then you can also choose if you want to show the title of the calendar or navigation buttons, even the date itself. Um, all of this information you can add. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it like this. This is totally fine, but I'm going to change the width to 300 and I'm going to change the height to 500. Now, this looks pretty good. You can adjust this to your liking if you don't really like how it looks in your chatbot. You're going to see how it looks here in a second. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the default view to be week. So this is actually going to show the weekly calendar for my availability. And I'm going to set the day to start on Monday so that the person can see my full availability for the week. Or we can change it to be something like, let's say, Thursday or whatever you want. But this is what we're going to start with. Outstanding. So then we're going to go up here and we're going to get this embed code with this iframe and we're just going to copy this. And now we're going to navigate back into our chatbot workflow and we're literally just going to paste this into the text box, where, text box where this message would be. And boom, you can see that it popped up. It looks really nice, really good. And we're going to take a look at how this comes up and how this looks in our chatbot. Cool. Pretty solid. It fits in there pretty well. Now, if you wanted to, we could make it shorter. We could make it um, narrower, whatever you want. You just have to change the width and height of it. But I actually like the way the size looks just like that. Great. So now that we've added and embedded our calendar, we're going to go ahead and add another talk block. And we're just going to say something along the lines of view the calendar and find a time. So we're going to say something like view the calendar and find an available time that works for you. And then below this, we're going to actually add another talk block just for kind of the user's experience. And we're going to give them an example. We're going to say, for example, you can say January 1st at 2 p.m. Kind of just giving the user an example of how they can format their response so that it's very clear how they interact with this chatbot. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to add another listen capture. We're going to add a capture block below this, change it from entities to entire user apply, and we're going to save it to the variable meeting time. Now, make sure you make this variable. We've named it meeting time. Great. So basically what we did was after the calendar pops up, we basically provide some in instructions on how to interact with it and how to schedule a time. And then we're going to capture the user's response for their preferred time based on what they see on our calendar and based on the availability that they can see into the variable meeting time. Great, but there's kind of a catch when it comes to interacting with Google Calendar and actually adding dates into your calendar. So there's a specific way that it needs to be formatted, and it would be great if we could just use natural language, January 1st at 2 p.m., to basically get the Google Calendar webhook API sort of stuff to actually schedule this meeting. But the catch is that they need it formatted in a very, very specific way. So we're going to use AI to basically take the user's meeting time request that they type in natural language and turn it into something that Google Calendar can understand. So we're going to go ahead and go to AI, set AI here, and we're going to put an AI model. And we're going to go ahead and paste in the prompt. So we're going to paste in this prompt here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say, based on the user's date and time request of meeting time, that's the variable that we just collected, create an expression formatted similar to this. Now, this is the way that our um, Google Calendar is able to understand what times we're requesting to add to the calendar. It has to be formatted like this, otherwise it will not work. And I'm saying that with the specific date and time that the user requested in specific standard time, so I'm being very specific, make sure that you use the specific meeting time and format it like this, and to only output the expression and nothing else. Great, so let's go ahead and save this to the variable meeting start time. I already made this variable, but you can add it yourself. And that is that. And let's go ahead and call this meeting start time. And let's go ahead and test this to make sure that it's outputting things the way we expect. Let's go ahead. I put in January 3rd at 2 p.m. It went ahead and output this. Outstanding. So it output pretty well. Everything looks pretty solid. Um, the only thing that we have to do now is that since we are doing this in a 30-minute increment, so we're having it schedule a 30-minute meeting, we need to add in the end time for the meeting as well as the start time. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to add another set AI block. And this is going to be the meeting end time. And let's go ahead and add that prompt in. And so here we are. 
Let's walk through this prompt really quick. So I'm saying that based on the user's date and time request, which was the original meeting time that they typed in, create an expression formatted similar to this. I'm giving it the meeting start time that we just generated, but add 30 minutes to it in Pacific Standard Time, which is my time zone, and only output the expression in nothing else. Great. Let's go ahead and set that to meeting end time. Now make sure you test this block as well. And you can also adjust what type of um, large language model you're using to see if it outputs better for you. Sometimes they can be a little finicky. So make sure you prompt, you test and everything like that. Okay. So now we're getting into a little bit of the API connection part of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add another block, go down to dev, press on API. So now we've got ourselves an API block here. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of set this up so that we can connect to it um, as soon as we have N8N set up. So we're kind of going to do a little bit of work beforehand before we actually jump into N8N. So first, we're going to change this get to post. And we're going to go ahead and grab this URL later on down the road. But first, we're going to set up some of the other things we need um, first. So let's go down to this body here. And let's press that plus sign. And what we're doing here in the body is we're basically taking all the data that we collected from the user or that we generated from the AI block. And we're actually going to set it as basically information that we're going to send to NAN. So the first thing that we're going to do is put in the name. And we're going to send the name variable to NAN so that that can be sent to Google Calendar. Next, we're going to do our email here. Let's go ahead and change that to email. And then we're going to do um, inquiry, which we can just set as meeting info. Actually, let's just change that to info. And then we're going to add this plus sign again. We're actually going to put in the meeting time. And in parentheses, we're going to put this in as natural language because this is going to be what the user actually typed in earlier when they input, oh, I want to meet January 3rd at 2 p.m. or something like that. So we're going to set this to meeting time. And then we're going to press this plus sign again. We're going to set the meeting start time expression, which is actually what we generated with the set AI when we took the original meeting time and turned that into the format that Google Calendar can understand. We're going to go ahead and set this to the variable meeting start time. And now the last thing we have to add with this plus sign is the meeting end time expression. So we're going to go ahead and put in the meeting end time as the variable that we're sending. Great. So we've got our body set up. This is all the data that we're going to send to NAN so that NAN can then send that to Google Calendar. But now what we need to do is actually navigate into NAN and get our webhook so that we can send this information. All right. So here we are in NAN. And if you haven't heard of NAN before, uh, it's a really, really great AI native workflow automation tool. If you've ever used tools like Make or Zapier, this is really similar, but it's actually my preferred choice for building out automations. Um, there's a lot of great features about it, but go ahead and sign up in the description below if you haven't already, and let's go ahead and move into our workspace. So, so assuming that you went ahead and used this plus sign here to create a new workflow and basically a new automation, you can see here that this is kind of just a finished product. It literally has two simple steps, the webhook and the Google Calendar create event step. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to delete these and start us from scratch here. But what you should see here is just this simple add first step. So we're going to press this plus sign here and we're going to type in webhook. So right here in this webhook, we're basically going to just fill this in so that we can receive information properly. You can see that here it says get. We're going to change this to post. And there's really nothing else that we need to change here except for copying this URL and then going into our calendar and actually pasting this in to this little block here. So just paste that in. That's the last step that we need to do. And now our um, API block is completely finished. So let's go back into NAN. And the last step that we need to do here is kind of test this. Um, so we're going to press listen for test event. And we're going to navigate back over to um, voice flow. And we're going to just go through the flow of this like an example so that we can send some information to this webhook to make sure that it's connected. So I'm going to just put in some basic information. And I'm going to say the reason I want to call is just to chat. And now the calendar's popped up. I'm going to kind of look at some of this availability here. All right, let's go with Friday the 3rd. So January 3rd at 2 p.m. Go ahead and send that. Great. So it should have sent that information. Let's go ahead and check. 
Cool. So we got this check mark here back in N8N. We can see all the information that was sent. So that is working successfully. Now we're going to go ahead and connect to Google Calendar next because we've set up our webhook. So let's go ahead and go into Google Calendar. We'll type that in here when we press this plus block, Google Calendar, and we're going to create an event. Now, this might look a little overwhelming at first, but let's just start with the basics. So first off, you need to connect your Google Calendar account. So whatever account you're displaying in that widget, connect that account here. Um, I recommend that you use the Google Calendar OAuth 2 API connection so that you basically just have to sign into Google Calendar instead of giving API keys and things like that. Um, makes it super easy. Make sure that you're signed in so that it can connect. Next, the resource is going to be an event. We're going to use a create operation, and then we're going to select the calendar that we're going to use. We'll just use... Um, We'll use this. And then we're going to go ahead and look over here on the left at the inputs. Now, this is all the information that was sent from the webhook over to this Google Calendar block. So let's go ahead and close headers because we don't need to use that at all. All we need to use right now is body. Now, we can see this is all the information that was sent to us via the webhook. So we need to input the start time, and that's actually going to be the meeting start time expression that we generated using that set AI block. And then we're going to put in the end time that was also sent over. And then we can add the start and end time so that it creates that block of time for the meeting. And then we're going to add a field. We're going to add the attendees so that the person who filled out this form can actually receive the notification that this new event has been created. So we're going to put json.body.email um, so that it puts in the user's email who filled this out into here. You can add as many attendees as you want, but for now we're going to use one. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through some of the other things that we can send. So the description, I think that's a pretty solid thing we can add. We'll just add in the info. So whatever the user typed in will be the description of what we're going to be discussing. We can also add things like location, max attendees, repeat frequency, all sorts of things, um, send updates, all sorts of options. But we're going to start with these two, and we're going to go ahead and press on test step. And as we can see, this node has executed. It's got a check mark. That means that it created a new event, and we are set. All right, so we are almost done here. The last thing we need to do is just add some user experience things. If this um, post request succeeds and we actually are able to make the event, we're going to add in um, just like a success block to tell them that it worked. So we're going to just go to talk, message. So we're just going to type in, great, you're booked. We'll get back to you soon with more details. You can put whatever you want in this block, but it's just a way to notify them that their scheduling of an appointment has succeeded. If this fails, we're going to go ahead and do this instead. And we're just going to say something that tells them, hey, it didn't work, but here's an alternative. We're going to say there was an issue with our system. Email us at Sierra at Botera AI to get a meeting set up. Great. Now you can connect these to other aspects of your chatbot, but we're going to go ahead and end it here. Pretty open-ended. You can connect it to whatever else you want to, but that is pretty much the extent of our system for today. Um, not too many steps, really, really powerful. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check out my Google Calendar to actually see the event that I was sent. And then we're going to wrap and tested this out. Here's the conversation that I had. I just input my information, looked at the calendar, put in when I want to meet. It said, great, we will be in touch. What else can I help you with? Going back here, we can see that that flow worked properly. And just an FYI, when you're testing these workflows, you need to press the test workflow button before you start putting in information. Otherwise, it will not work. So make sure that you press that test workflow button first. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at my Google Calendar to see what's been scheduled. So we can see here that we've got this meeting set up in the calendar. If we look at it, we can see that it's set for 2 p.m. Um, from 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. January 3rd, 2025. And it put in the Pacific time zone like I had requested in the prompting. Make sure that you prompt that to change to whatever you need or ask for the user's input on the time zone if you want that. But so far, it's done exactly what I'd asked it to do. It also added in the description that I'm just looking to chat. And we can see here that the guests are exactly who had input their email here, um, which is my email. And we can see that it actually is waiting for me to respond to this um, event invitation. And it'll email me actually at this email that the event has been created so that there's some real confirmation in their email inbox that this event has been created. So this looks really great. It did everything that I wanted it to. And I'm super duper happy with this automation. And that concludes our video for today. You have successfully connected VoiceFlow to Google Calendar. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below some cool things that you're able to build out with this. I'm excited to see what you guys can do because I kept it really, really simple so that you guys can build off of it and customize it. Make sure that you check out my website, botterra.ai, to check out templates that we've built out in the past and potentially work with me. And I'm excited to see you in the next video.